Hello again, you're watching EASD TV. My name is Vivian Parry, and we have a very intriguing session for you now. I think it's the first time that we've ever had a sexologist in the house, but we actually have. And it's in relation to a, uh, a session in the program today called When Sex is X. Sexual difficulties are enormously common amongst people with uh, diabetes. And we have two people to discuss this with us. Um, first of all, Marika De Witt uh, from the University of Maastricht, who is the sexologist, but a clinical psychologist. Yes. And we also have from Poznan University of uh, Medical uh, Sciences, uh, Ola Juruska. I got that right. Near enough. Yeah. Um, so tell us, you're a diabetologist. Tell me how common sexual uh, problems are amongst people living with diabetes. Looking in the articles and epidemiologic data, they are even like twice as high than in general population. And it's not only the higher amount or higher increased occurrence, but also those difficulties and uh, are more severe and more resistant to typical treatment. So it's a huge clinical problem. But it's also huge clinical problem because patients are not so open to discuss about it and as well doctors physicians are not also open to search actively and ask the patients so the problem i think is double so one thing that it is in fact the complication and something what coexists with diabetes and the other side is that we still do not recognize it in a proper way but of course you know cardiovascular problems are very common in people living with diabetes and immediately for men, that means erectile dysfunction goes straight along with it. And is that the main presenting problem? Well, in male population, it is. Uh, and in fact, it's one way the complication of diabetes, but from our perspective as a physician, it's also a symptom yes. that the body is not working and a warning properly. Sign. And a warning sign. Mm -hmm. Much more complicated is an issue in case of women, where it's not so objectively easily measured. And that's why probably we do not recognize it properly. And I think that's our homework to do as physicians. Marika, what's your experience? Well, there is, uh, in general, sexual problems are common, not only in the diabetes population. And I think in general that physicians need to address the topic more because uh, it's an unmet need. I mean, a lot of patients have this need to talk about their sexual sexuality, but if you consult for depression or diabetes or whatever, the patients will not bring it up themselves. But it is highly prevalent. Huh? We see indeed ED, low desire, uh, dry orgasm in men and in women, there's especially the genital pain uh, problems, which is a result of, of low arousal. Uh, it's, it's having inaroused intercourse which leads uh, to, to genital pain. But what I think in, in diabetes, what is really important is that hormones play a role and uh, disbalances and, and cardiovascular factors do play a role. But when there is low arousal, we should not immediately attribute it only to the biological factors because obviously it's also about the sexual stimulation not being rewarding enough. It's about routine in a relationship. It can be relationship issues playing a role. Um, so that's why I think it's important to take a broader screening. And, and what we tend to do is looking at the biological factors, but sex is biopsychosocial, which means that it's also the, the psychological complications of having diabetes. It's uh, the, the fear, the daily hassle of living with diabetes, with a chronic disease. It's wearing these pumps and, and, and glycose um, monitors, which also affects your body image and your uh, identity, um, um, having the consequences, urological complaints like incontinence or like uh, subfertility, which also affects your sense of masculinity, femininity, uh, which also will have an impact on, on, on your, your, your sexual responding. So I think really taking this broader approach is really important here. So we shouldn't medicalize it. Yeah. But on the other hand, we should recognize that there exactly. are some really serious medical issues and, and interesting, of course, that, you know, it's sometimes they are an early warning of, of cardiovascular problems developing. Marika, how do you go about counselling, treating, 
Where do you where do you start? I think the first important thing is doing a proper screening. So making sure I think for that we need to sort of change the curricula of, of healthcare professionals because a lot of doctors don't know how to ask the question about sex. So that's the first step. Um, and then when you notice there is a sexual problem, I think it's really important to give good psychoeducation so that both partners, if there is a relationship, give the psychoeducation and include the partner in the treatment because both are patients, mm. both are suffering. I mean, if you're you're your husband, for example, has ED, as a partner, you may feel like, oh, there's something wrong with me. He's not aroused anymore. There might be trust issues. So a lot of relationship issues also play a role. I think it's really important to try to sort of uh, deal with these unhelpful threatening cognitions like this, this performance demand, the failure anxiety, that all will distract your attention from the sexual stimulation and actually increase the, the, the sexual problems. I think that's important. And what I think in counseling is really important is to focus more on pleasure. The outcome of your treatment should not be only about function and mm. about uh, uh, making sure you have a firm erection to have penetration. Mm. It should really be about creating a context together to, to Are experience. Are you going to have fun and have an, in, an, an intimate... Exactly. And you know, and it's, it's really important to have this pleasure and shared pleasure because what is it that you want if you want sex with your partner? It's not about having a firm erection and orgasm. Mm. It's about being cared for, being loved and, and desired, intimacy. intimacy. Yeah. And I think that is also important if you see that there are some medical issues. Broaden your scope and think about sex as more than only penetration sex. Now, are there lots of, I mean, it's significant that we're talking to two women here. Lots of doctors are actually embarrassed to talk about yes. these sort of things with their uh, patients. Is it better that we say to them, look, you don't have to talk to them about sex, but what you do have to do is recognize that there may be a problem and here are the people that you need to send them to to talk to, but what you may not do is just kind of ignore it. Yeah, I think that would be, uh, it would be the worst. What we observe in our department is we make a questionnaire in our mm. population of patients and we ask the question, what do they think, who should initiate the conversation about that kind of problems? And most of patients uh, decided that it should be a doctor and it's good, it will be a doctor they already knew. Yeah. So diabetes is a chronic disease. It's that you have your own diabetologist and you have your... Um, a person who you trust. So I think this could be the best um, like place to discuss about such difficult, I think, issue for both sides. And I think what uh, what was mentioned that it's really crucial that the, we as the physicians should have a support how to do it. Uh, we should know how to create the environment to talk about it safely uh, and not afraid about it. It's a normal physiological function. And it also interferes with other part of yeah. good metabolic management of diabetes. Yeah. It could even be a factor which motivates the patient to improve their outcomes in mm. diabetes. So yeah. it's nothing to be afraid of. We just should sit down and talk about sex. I think it may be more difficult counselling the doctors to do it yeah. rather than the patients yeah. to, <laughs> to talk about to it. Talk to, ab to, yeah, to talk to, about it. It's true. Yeah, and it's important that doctors themselves feel supported to talk about these yeah. things. How do you help doctors? Well, I think what helps is uh, what we uh, advocate is, is asking the question in the first consultation. I mean, when you have put the diagnosis of, of diabetes, that can, you can just tell, like, you know, diabetes can go along with changes in the sexual response. Did you experience this so far? We know patients, if you start with decentralizing, so we know from research that patients suffer mm. from, do you have this problem? And then you open the conversation and maybe the patient doesn't feel like trusting enough or maybe the relationship is still insecure but by asking the question the patient knows this is a team you can address this is something I can discuss with my doctor so when they feel ready they will start discussing it but if you never talk about sex the patient will feel like somehow yeah ashamed to, to raise yeah. the, the, the topic themselves so what I always recommend is like when you give information on diabetes on all the different influences it has on your daily life also give the information on sexuality and then see whether the conversation can open up. So unfortunately, we can't clone both of you because <laughs> you need to be in many places at one time. Uh, but what we can do is uh, you can on demand watch your session uh, and there are lots of useful things, hit, uh, hints, tips, 
And uh, it's been a delight to have you with us. And thank you, because this is such an important subject and it's so often neglected. Great that you got it onto the programme. Big tick. Thank you. Thank you. There'll be lots more from ESD TV very soon. <laughs>